Hi everybody, my name is Sven Wenke, I'm the creative director and founder at Laren Studios. And today I'm very proud to announce to you our return to Kickstarter with our new RPG, Divinity Original Sin 2. Divinity Original Sin 2 will be a game about how your origins affect who you are and what chances you get in life. At the start of the game, you'll pick a single character and determine its background, story, race and origins. Now, you'll quickly discover that these choices have a profound impact on the options that you'll be presented with during the game. And it's something that we want to take very far. In Divinity Original Sin 2, you can play with up to four players. And the really unique thing is that you can play cooperatively and competitively. When playing competitively, you'll engage in competitive questing and the other players will essentially be role-playing your antagonists. When playing cooperatively, you'll be using your unique talents, origin and race advantages to help the party achieve its goals. What's really cool here is that you can seamlessly switch between cooperating and competing depending on the situation you're in. So what you're seeing here is the Divinity Original Sin 2 prototype, built on top of the Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition engine. It's still very much work in progress and lots of things will change, but it's already sufficient to demonstrate a couple of the key things that we're building the game around. The party consists of a wood elf, two humans and an imperial dwarf. We are escaped sorcerers, users of a forbidden form of magic and we are on the run from divine magisters. We're looking for help to travel to the mainland and are trying to enter a village where we'll hope we'll be able to get a ride on a dragon. Getting into the village, however, turns out to be problematic because of some local unrest with the dwarves. My main character hails from this town and is recognized by the guard. This facilitates things for her and she easily gains entry. However, the rest of the party is not allowed in. While the thief and the elf eventually convince the guard via individual persuasion events, the dwarf fails and has to find another way in. Like this, pretty much every dialogue that you'll encounter will run differently, depending on who is doing the talking. And it reinforces how who you are, what you are and where you come from affects your options in life. So all of this results in a lot of gameplay, because you're continuously trying to figure out which party member to use to talk to an NPC. Now the interesting thing is that in this example, the Dwarf and Thief are being controlled not by me, but by Thomas. And it so happens to be that Thomas wants to help the Dwarves in this village, whereas I'm determined to demonstrate that Dwarves should know their place. While eventually fate may bring us together again, for the moment we're working on the conflicting sides of the narrative. And we're trying to use the advantages of our origin stories, as well as our skills, abilities and talents to try to get the upper hand. So the story that we've made for Divinity Original Sin 2 makes all of these things possible. And mixed with all the RPG systems that we have, it really makes for a lot of fun. So here you see me mixing a red coloring herb with a poison potion. And this is me putting it in Thomas's backpack. So when he's going to drink it, he's going to have a little bit of a surprise. Now here you see me telling the guards that Thomas is a criminal and that he is smuggling contraband, which happens to be the case. So the guards are going to ask to investigate his inventory and they're going to fall on the contraband and they're going to take Thomas to jail. And here you see me backstabbing him. Thomas has just finished an epic fight and he's very weak and so that's a perfect opportunity for me to say to Thomas, Thomas I don't like you anymore. So obviously all of this is great in multiplayer but it also makes for a much stronger single player experience. Allowing for both cooperative and competitive narrative gameplay forces us as developers to implement plenty of options and in single player that means that there's great many choices to make. That's a lot of role playing right there and our ambition is to go very far with it. But obviously that's not our only ambition. Divinity Original Sin's combat system was one of the highlights of the game and development in Divinity Original Sin 2 will be focused on maintaining the same feel while expanding on the things that you can do and the challenges you'll be encountering. We're going to try to bring you more skills, talents, abilities as spells as well as a long list of new creatures and enemies that will offer you plenty of tactical challenges. And that's not all. We're investing a lot more in the narrative development of the game to ensure that everything you encounter will be interesting, fun and part of a deeper story filled with plot twists and difficult decisions for you to take. A lot of effort is being put in bringing you a more grounded and serious game in which everything is consistent but which still contains plenty of fun moments. We will also include an updated version of the editor that we're using to create the game. It's becoming an incredibly powerful tool and we're very eager to see what you'll come up with. Divinity Original Sin 2 is going to be a fantastic game, but it's also a very ambitious game and that's why we're returning to Kickstarter. We would like to maximize the amount of things that you can do in the game. Now, we already have a budget in place thanks to the success of the original game, but all of the things that I've been talking about can be taken that much further. So I'm hopeful that you'll be willing to back us and in return I promise that we're going to make you a very fun RPG full of innovations and full of surprises. Hope you have a great day, thank you for watching and hopefully until one of our updates. Take care, bye bye.